to uh, welcome back to our first of our uh, Friday um, uh, field trips out into some historic sites around the Upper Keys. My name is Brad Bertelli. I'm the curator of the Keys History and Discovery Center located on the grounds of the Islander Resort. And today for our first, our inaugural uh, Friday field trips, we're, we've come to the Florida Keys Memorial, which is more commonly known locally as the Hurricane Monument. Now the monument was built uh, in, 19, er, in 1937. It was built to honor all of the victims of the 1935 Labor Day hurricane, which to this day remains the most powerful hurricane to ever strike North America. It was a very compact storm, um, and it was a wildly, wildly powerful, a Category 5 hurricane with winds you know, in excess of, gusts in excess of 200 miles an hour, with a storm surge of 18, feet, uh, 18 to 20 feet. And what's interesting about the obelisk behind me is if you can imagine an 18 foot, fall, wa 18 foot wall of water coming across the, this area of the Florida Keys, the obelisk is 18 feet tall. So that's about the size of the, of the tidal surge that came rushing over, over the islands uh, on, that, on that Labor Day, that September 2nd, 1935. Now, after the hurricane, there were, you know, the number of deaths associated with the storm is unclear. No one knows the exact number. It's around 500. Um, and in the wake of the storm, there were a tremendous amount of bodies and they were, uh, you know, had a hard time dealing with, with so much death, so much destruction. So the governor of, of Florida decreed that we needed to, or that they needed to start uh, cremating the bodies. So in the effective storm area, which was really Key Largo to Duck Key, basically, uh, Grassy Key, there were a couple of fatalities on Grassy Key. Um, there were as many as 25 cremation sites located between Plantation Key and Long, and, uh, and Long Key. And in the, you know, in two years later, when this was built, this, the obelisk is behind me, this feature in front of me is actually a crypt. And after the, after this was built in 1937, crews went back to all of these cremation sites and, and collected the materials there and, and put them into this, this crypt area. Now, the mosaic on top of the crypt shows really the affected area of, uh, of the storm area. In the left-hand corner over here, or the, depending on where you're standing from, this would be Tavernier Key right here, and we're looking at Key Largo. And then working our way down, I'm gonna follow Aaron here real quick. We, we passed Plantation Key, we passed Windley Key. This, we are about in this area right here, on, on Upper Matacumbi Key. We have Indian Key in the middle, then there's Lower Matacumbi Key. Now as we work our way down, there's Long Key, Conk Key, Grassy Key, and then, and then the Grassy Key and some of the other areas. Now, when this site was opened in, in 1937, when this was celebrated um, and unveiled, there were between 4,000 and 5,000 people who, who came to the unveiling. And it was, there was orchestras playing or, or bands playing. There was even street performers. There was a magician doing, doing tricks you know, in, in the area. There were you know, uh, governors and mayors and everybody came you know, to, to witness this really somber, somber event and dedicate, and dedicate this to all the lives as the sign up here behind me says, dedicated to in the memory of the civilians and war veterans whose lives were lost in the hurricane of September 2nd, 1935. Now in, before the hurricane, in 1934, the entire population of the Upper Keys was about 650 people. Now, many of the victims were, were World War I veterans who, were, who would come down to the Keys to build uh, bridge systems. And they were located in three work camps, one on Windley Key and two on Lower Matacumbi Key. And with this, this arrival of all of these, these veterans, um, is, what essentially happened is the population of the Upper Keys doubled. 
Each of these work camps uh, had about could, could carry about 250 people, 250 people each. And these were a lot of the people who were who were caught in the storm and killed. Um, the best part, if there could be a silver lining to the, the, the Labor Day hurricane 1935, was that it happened on a, on a holiday weekend, on September 2nd. So many of the people and, and many of the workers who were living in, in, in these work camps, which were just you know clapboard structures and tents, had gone to Miami, had gone to Key West in order to celebrate the holiday. So the death toll could have been significantly higher had it arrived on a Wednesday or Thursday when the workforces were, were still in, in full force. Now there are a couple of features about the about the um, about the uh, the monument that are really interesting. Uh, it's all cre created from keystone, and it's hard to believe that the upper keys specifically, but the Florida Keys in general, are really built upon an ancient coral reef. And this this keystone is actually limestone, and you can see the fossilized corals in it. And this is what we're walking on. And this is what the upper keys and the, it, it, are really built on, the, the, this ancient fossilized coral reef. And this limestone is quarried, and there's a big quarry on Windley Key right across from Theater of the Sea. It's Windley Key Fossilized Coral Reef State Park. I may have gotten that wrong because it's a long name and I always blow it. Um, but there was an active quarry there, and that's a really excellent place to visit once we open back up because you, there are still eight foot tall walls of the quarry where you can see all these fossilized corals in it. But Keystone was manufactured because it was a decorative, it's a very a, attractive decorative stone. And it was shipped, watch your foot. It was, it was shipped to, uh, to Miami, to the, the Keystone, uh, Art, Keystone, Keystone Rock Company where it was kind of cut and polished to a sheen to make this really attractive, this attractive facade. So we've had a couple questions come in. All right. Austin would like to know if Key West was as devastated as Alvarado. Now, I said earlier when I started, this this was a really compact storm. So while on Labor Day, you know, the storm is up here raging with, with you know, uh, gusts of winds in excess of 200 miles an hour and this mighty storm surge and all this devastation, Key West recorded wind gusts of about 28 miles an hour. So the affected areas were, were really concentrated. So while it was a very powerful storm, the hurricane forces did not extend very far out from the eye wall. And another question from Ryan Foster. With 500 dead, that massive population. Um, and again, uh, the total population of the Upper Keys was probably around, with the addition of the World War I veterans, probably around 13, 1,400 people in, in the Upper Keys. So that's a pretty significant total of, of lives that were lost. Uh, other questions, or is that good? Absolutely. All right, excellent. So, now one of the in interesting features of the limestone and are, are, are these red spots. And a lot of people wonder about, you know, why is that red? And when the people, the early pioneers first came to this area, they talked about red holes where there, where they were, uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of rock. And these red holes consisted of, it's actually dust from the Sahara Desert that over the course of tens of thousands of years has blown over from Africa across the Atlantic Ocean and settled in the area. Even today sometimes you'll see these, uh, we have these, these, this fine dust settling on our cars and, and, and around the community. And it's actually dust from, from, from Africa, from the Sahara Desert, and which settles in these holes and in, in some cases would create uh, these pockets where the early the pioneers could, could farm without having to dig very deep. Because if you've ever tried to garden in the Florida Keys, uh, in the Upper Keys specifically, it's, it can be backbreaking work because there's really not a whole lot of, of topsoil. And that's another reason to visit the Winley, the state park on Winley Key, is you can see how, you know, these, these open quarry walls with this little bit of, of topsoil. So the trees, instead of really rooting down, their roots spread, spread around. All right. Now, one of the kind of interesting things about, about, about the, uh, once you, you can go around the corner, okay, um, ab about the, the monument is for a long period of time, the, uh, 
there was a, a, a book uh, that, that talks about unusual roadside attractions. And the, monument, and the monument was called the Wrong Way Hurricane Monument. Because they, as the storm approached from the Atlantic Ocean side, we can see that the palm trees are blowing as if the storm is coming from the, the Gulf of Mexico or, or Florida Bay. So people assumed that the artist made the, the palm trees blowing in the wrong way. But the thing about a hurricane is that there are two sides of the hurricane. There's actually there's four quadrants. So at some point in, in every storm, the wind blows from every direction. So it's not the wrong way hurricane monument. It's just the plain old hurricane monument, which is a really, you know, it, 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 it's a, every, memorial, every Labor Day, they, there's a nice celebration here. People bring flowers and kind of pay tribute to all the people who, were, who lost their lives. And, and it was this storm that really changed the, the face of the Florida Keys, um, personally for the families who, who lived here, the pioneers, but also that was the last day that Henry Flagler's Oversea Railroad ever, ever traveled, and that proved the end of, of his, of his uh, very costly and amazing endeavor. And so what we're going to do now every Friday, we are going to travel around the community and visit some of these sites and bring some more history to our, our viewers and to the, our community and to all those who are watching. And thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you uh, on Monday with Blake for more uh, talk about our, our aquariums and our, our partnership with, with Moulton Marine Laboratory. Tuesday and Thursday, we'll be back at the museum and I'll be talking about more exhibits and more stories and more artifacts at the Keys History and Discovery Center. And then every Friday, we're gonna come out and explore a different aspect of, uh, of Florida Keys history. So thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you again next week.